I recently interviewed my friend, Dr. Leo. He has a PhD in toxicology and a background on pharmaceuticals. So when it comes to the coronavirus or COVID-19 and how drugs like hydroxychloroquine might work, I felt like he was a reliable source of information on the matter. This is how the conversation went and I hope you find it useful. Do you want to tell the audience about your experience? It started like three weeks ago. I had the shivers, I had the temperature, but I was taking this drug, we will talk later, and I recovered in a couple of days. You know the feeling, when the itching in your throat, in your nose, the feeling when you're about to get sick? This feeling is still lasting. It's like three weeks and I'm going, and it's like I feel like every day I'm about to get sick, but I just got used to it that because I don't get sick. I just have this itching feeling. And I noticed that I don't smell a thing, like nothing. So I sprayed clothes, I smelled nothing. I tried to smell it from a cap, I tried different perfumes, absolutely nothing. Then I called my friend, I said, look, how are you feeling? Like I have no sensation of smell. And he said like, look, I have temperature for 10 days and I don't smell anything. And he's like, my girlfriend is also sick. So we kind of thought we got COVID. So I told my friend to go to hospital. So finally, after persuading a couple of days, he went to hospital. They did not do COVID test for him because apparently he was not eligible, but they said he has the unknown virus, infection of a known virus, so he should stay home. So, well, after that, I was staying home, not going anywhere. He's staying home. I can't smell anything. I have to drink sugary drinks so because i then i can taste them otherwise yeah i have to you have to try something strong so i can taste them otherwise it's like it's bland and no smell at all like literally you know when we say in english i can't smell shit literally i can't smell it and this is two weeks after you you think you got it yeah so like uh, i got it three weeks ago like the, the first weeks. symptoms three weeks ago the first symptoms appeared and oh, right and I probably, and I noticed that I don't have smell only last week, but probably I didn't have it for, for two weeks already. And like 10 to 14 days after getting infected with the virus, is this when you would expect to start developing immunity, but it's surprising that you haven't? Well, it's not, it's not that surprising. If you look at the statistics, like Italy, for example, the, the recovered people are not decreasing that fast as the ones infe being infected. It seems like infection it takes at least a month for people to clear out this virus out of the system. And it's not surprising if the virus infects the, your nerve cells. So it should stay longer there. Like, I mean, I hope we can clear it and it doesn't stay dormant like herpes or, or yeah. like other viruses that infect your neurons. Based on your research, do you think taking hydroxychloroquine, like you mentioned you've taken, uh, is going to guarantee that someone gets cured? I take 200 milligrams, like a dose a day, what's, what's on the package, so I have it. I have it, it's like a Plaquenil, it's, it's a brand name. Uh, yep. And I take two pills, like I have a two in the morning, or one in the morning, one evening, uh, how I feel it, but usually two in the morning. But I do not overdose it, no way. Like, this, this is what I don't do. I, I just take, take 200 milligrams. It's not like the more you take, uh, the better you're going to get. The more you take, the more virus you're killing. Uh, you're probably going to end up killing your own cells and the virus if you, if you think that way. I started taking the drug literally one day before getting symptoms. And I had a fever for two days. My friend who got sick the exactly same time, we basically had a party on Saturday. Wednesday, we both of us are sick. He had a fever for two weeks. When was the last time or ever you had the fever, consecutive fever, for two weeks? And do you think if you were taking hydroxychloroquine for some time, then could you have prevented getting infected by uh, COVID-19, do you think? I was actually reading today, so they suggest the clinical trials to see if it can prevent the COVID-19, but I don't believe it can prevent COVID. I think it can prevent the onset of disease. So if you get the virus, it slows down the replication and the virus doesn't give you any any symptoms in the end of the day before your immune system kicks in and, and kills the virus so you could say i wasn't infected but you don't know that you was infected just like the virus did not reach concentrations enough to give you symptoms and like yourself if there are people who have covid19 and they're self-isolating they're at home uh, their conditions getting bad but they're not admitted to the hospital they're not being allowed to go to the hospital to be treated is there any drug that they can get right now? So if you can't get hydrochloroquine, I think the only way, the only thing you can do is just 
naturally boost your immunity. So take vitamin C, like high doses of vitamin C, like 1.5 milligrams, something like from one to two, from one to two milligrams, something in that range. Uh, vitamin D, zinc, like zinc supplements. Don't take ibuprofen because ibuprofen was shown to help virus and, and, and worsen your con condition. So if you have a headache, stick with paracetamol, not ibuprofen. How accurate do you think the infection and the death figures are? And how inaccurate do you think they are if you think they're inaccurate? Very, very inaccurate, like extremely inaccurate. Like, and then there are several reasons. Obvious reason is China hiding the true infection rate and true deaths. Whatever China showing, like they just made up the numbers. Like we don't know the true extent. Is it 10 times, 100,000 times bigger? Around 40 to 50% of people show no symptoms. So these people who show no symptoms, they never get tested. I didn't get tested. My friend didn't get tested. But we both think that, well, we are 95% sure we, we have COVID. So we are not tested. We don't go into statistics. Then another thing is people who right now die of whatever reason, they get automatically assigned COVID-19 death. So yeah. the true extent, the, the death rates are inaccurate. People are not getting tested. Not, we don't know how many people actually are infected. And this gives us the skewed numbers where we think like, oh, it's 8%, 9%. But in essence, we don't know. Is there evidence to substantiate the fact that uh, China is definitely, um, you know, underreporting the numbers? We, we know that Chinese uh, put the doctors in jail for misinformation, for causing panic. So that's the very first thing that they try to hide the they have a disease to begin with. Another thing is like that China, before they announced to the world that there is an epidemic, there is a known virus going on, they actually issued quarantine to their military schools. So before they announced to the world that we have a new disease, they already quarantined the military schools and some military bases. They already did it. So we already knew it. They just didn't tell us. They probably didn't do testings as well. They just locked the people down, got the bodies out. And then the city didn't get into statistics. Oh, we have like 1,000 people dead, but we never tested them. So yeah, okay, let's just yeah. burn them. When do you think we're going to get a vaccine? Maybe they will start giving vaccine by the end of the year. And for us, probably next year. Like, I don't, I don't think the vaccine is going to come this fast. Yeah. It's a lot of testing, like, with a vaccine. For instance, if even they came out with vaccine right now, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it because I would be afraid. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be tested. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the first one to take it. But like, no, I say like, I'll stick with COVID. At least I know the symptoms are mild, so I'm, I'm good. Based on your personal experience and the experience of other people in the news, uh, do you think it's likely people might get infected again? Well, there is evidence that some people get reinfections. So some, some, a small percentage of people get reinfected. Another thing, we don't know how this virus is going to mutate. So. If it's all to stay in us, in our population, if it's going to become endemic. So I think we have two or three already coronaviruses that are endemic to us. That means already circulate. I think it's going to be another one that's going to circulate among us. And why do you think this is the first time we saw the coronavirus become such a massive pandemic? Why, why hasn't it happened before? Yeah. Well, before we had SARS, like what was in 2003, and then we got yeah. MERS. So now COVID-19 is different because... COVID-19 has a lower mortality rate and uh, it's more efficient in being transmitted than the other two. Half of the people who get this virus, they don't show symptoms. So these people, they can walk around like normal human beings and then infect everyone without knowing themselves, without realizing that they are being infected. Whereas with SARS-2, Mortality rate was what, 50%? Something something incredibly high, I don't remember. But 40% as far as I know. The incubation period, the period before getting infected and showing the first symptoms was much lower. Whereas with COVID-19, it's 14 days. Could this have been prevented? I think if China didn't lie about this disease and if they didn't try to hide it, that they have a problem, if they didn't try to hide the, ex the extent of this problem, then the world would have prepared way much better. And we were looking for one month and doing nothing. So if we knew from the beginning that's what about to come, then people would say, okay, we have one month before it hit us. Let's, let's do everything we can, not like, okay, we don't know what to do. We, we have to put people on the floor because we are not, we're underprepared. For the countries that know it's coming, but it's not there yet, 
should they be stockpiling something on everything that Europe is stockpiling on every, like because Europe has shortage of everything of face masks, gloves, doctor equipment, protective equipment. Yeah, some of them right now. So they 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 think if they're cool, but whoever shifts, like they might have a problem, and we might be okay. Yeah. So it's not just gloves and beds and doctors that we need, but it's also tests to identify if you have the virus now and tests to identify if you've had the virus in the past. And it's starting to sound like there's a, a lot more resources that the world needs than, than we actually might have. No, we have a lot of resources. We're just not allocating them very well. Like there's, there's lots of resources. Like the world has has ability to pay 100 million for football players or like, the, like this cathedral in France and they burn down. Like suddenly got like millions of funds being donated to, to rebuild this whole building. Like, you know, America is printing money like crazy. Europe to about to start printing money crazy. So we do have resources and we do have technical capabilities. Well, on that drop of optimism, I'm going to thank you, Dr. Leo, for answering all of these questions. Nice talking to you, Russell. Bye, <laughs> yeah. guys.